I know that a lot of elementary school teachers are going to be using Seesaw as your primary learning management system. So I made this video to show you the most important features you need to know about using Seesaw at the elementary level. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can invite students into Seesaw even if they don't have email addresses. I'll also show you how you can link families to your Seesaw account, as well as go over some of the most important settings you should be aware of, how to access pre-made lessons in Seesaw, how to create your own lessons, as well as how to make announcements that go out to students and families. And then I'm also going to show you what the student end of Seesaw looks like so that you have a better understanding of the student experience after you've pushed out an assignment. And if you're interested, I've also included a link to a tutorial that I've made specifically for students teaching them how to use Seesaw. The link to that video is in the pinned comment and the description below. And that's going to take you over to my YouTube channel that I set up specifically for students that's COPA compliant so you can use it safely in your class. So I know that sounds like a lot. I do have a lot to cover in this video, but it's all gonna be really important information if you're using Seesaw. So I'm looking forward to showing it to you. My name is Sam Carey, and this is my YouTube channel for the New Ed Tech Classroom. As always, if you find the tips that I share in this video helpful, you can show your appreciation by hitting the like button, leaving a comment, and also sharing it with other teachers, as well as subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. So let's start totally from the beginning here. From Google, I'm going to search for Seesaw, and then I'm going to click on the first link that pops up. Here, you'll see that you're able to sign up for a Seesaw account for free. After you click to sign up, you'll choose that you are a teacher, and then you'll need to create your account. After you've created an account, it's going to prompt you to create a class. Here it will give you an option to import a class from Google Classroom. I'm actually not going to show this in this particular video because if people are using Seesaw as their primary learning management system, they may not be using Google Classroom at all. However, if you're interested in looking at how this would work, I do show that in my other Seesaw video, and it's also pretty straightforward. You just have to click on the link here and follow the instructions to import students from your Google Classroom into Seesaw. So here I'm going to go ahead and give my class a name, and then I'm going to choose a grade level. After you set up that class, you'll be taken to your teacher dashboard. And once you're in, you can start to add students. So I'm going to click on add students. And then the first prompt that will pop up is going to ask if I want students to sign in with email addresses or not. It's a common problem that younger students do not have email addresses and then are not able to sign into accounts. So Seesaw has worked around that problem and I'm gonna show you how it works. You'll go ahead and select no that students do not have emails. Then you'll choose whether or not your students are on shared devices or one-to-one, -one, and I'm gonna choose one-to-one -one here. Now I can add my roster of students into Seesaw. You can either type names in manually, or you can paste a list of all your students' names so that they all get imported at the same time. So I'm going to add a couple of names here and then click the green check to proceed. Seesaw makes it very easy for students to log in. They can either log in using the desktop version of Seesaw or the app version on their smartphone or tablet. Then they will click on student and either enter the class code that you give them here, or they can scan a QR code if they're using a smartphone or a tablet. After students have entered the class code or scanned the QR code, they'll see a list of names of all the students who are enrolled in the class, and they just have to select their own name. Now that we saw how that process looks on the teacher end, let's just look really quickly at how a student would actually get in. So the student can also search for Seesaw, click on the link to Seesaw, They'll go to the top right hand corner to log in and there they'll select that they are a student. After they select students, they'll have some different options for how they can log in. So if students did have an email, they could of course use that here and they can also use a clever single sign in as well. And then of course, like I just showed, if students don't have emails, you can just share that class code with them. They can enter it and they'll be able to get in. And then after they've entered that code, they'll be prompted to select their name from your roster of students. They'll verify that it is in fact them, and then they'll be logged in. Now back on the teacher end, let's take a look at some of the settings so that we can get those set up as well as set up our basic organization system. On the top right hand corner, you can click on the wrench to be able to access the settings for Seesaw. There you'll see you can still continue to add students to your roster, and there's also a way you can add families as well, and we're gonna look at that in a moment. So you can of course customize things like the name and appearance for your class, but probably the first most important thing you'll need to do is go to manage teachers and then add emails for co-teachers 
if other adults are also going to need to be able to access the teacher end of your Seesaw account. Below, if you click on student likes and comments, you'll see that the default setting is that students cannot like each other's work, but that they can comment on it. You can probably just leave these settings the way they are with student likes off, but allowing students to make comments. Just make sure if you allow them to make comments that you also have it set up so that you have to moderate the comments before they get posted to Seesaw. You also have an option here of whether or not you want to allow students to see each other's work or whether or not you just want the work to be seen between the teacher and the student. If you're going to use Seesaw more like a learning management system where everything is going to get posted to Seesaw, then I'd recommend that you turn this notification off. You'll notice as well that the new items require approval is also turned on by default. So I just want to show you really quickly what this is going to look like. As students are turning in their work, on the teacher end, you're going to see that work come through and you'll have to approve that work before it shows up in a student's journal. If the work doesn't meet expectations, you can leave a comment on the work to let them know how they need to fix it, and then you can send it back to them requesting that they make those revisions before they resubmit it. I tend not to use the delete function unless it's just totally inappropriate or wildly off base from what they're supposed to do. And then if you are ready to approve the assignment, you're just going to click on the green approve check. I do think this is an important piece of Seesaw, the checking of work and verifying that it meets expectations before you allow it to come in. Just keep in mind though, if you're using it for all of your assignments and students are turning in lots of assignments, you're going to constantly need to be checking that work and approving it in order for that work to actually show up as submitted. The next important setting is to enable family access. When you enable family access, that's going to allow you to invite families in to be able to see their students' work. You can also choose the way that families can interact with their students' work. So for example, you can choose whether or not you want families to be able to like work, which again, I would also just leave off. And you can choose whether or not you want to allow them to comment and whether you need to be able to approve those comments. And I would keep both of those on. The next important setting is to manage folders. Here, what probably makes the most logical sense is to set up folders based on subjects. That being said, if you're just a single subject teacher, you could also just subdivide your subject into different categories. Seesaw does have a paid version and skills is one of those premium features. If you're using Seesaw as essentially a self-contained learning management system, where you also want to be able to essentially grade students within Seesaw as well, then this would definitely be an important feature to have. And it's possible that you do if your school has chosen to use it as their primary LMS. If you don't have premium access, you can also just play around with it during the initial trial period to see what it's all about. So the basic idea is that you can manually create skills that are corresponding to standards. And then what will happen is when you create an assignment, you can associate assignments with particular skills. And then as students turn in those assignments, you'll also be able to assess them based on the skills that you set up. So let's scroll up to the top here and look at how you can invite families. If you already have a spreadsheet with all your family's emails, you could just upload them yourself and then that will send your families an invite so that they can sign up. You can also just enter a phone number and that will ping them with a text and prompt them to download the app version of Seesaw and that's another way that they can get in as well. And then if you just need to email out a general link to parents, you can generate a link and you can do that here too. And if you'd like more information about what happens on the family end, you can click on this link below to see all of the different things that parents will see when they log into their accounts. The basic idea is that they can opt in to getting notifications whenever their students put work into their journals. And then they can comment on the work that their students did. So it's a great way to open a window into exactly what's happening in your classroom. Now that we have our settings ready to go, let's look at the teacher dashboard. If you click on journal, you'll see that you have access to either a class journal or to individual student folders. So you can see on this other Seesaw account that I have that actually has student work in it, that after students have uploaded work, it's all going to show up together in the class journal in a running stream. And then if you selected an individual student's folder, you could just see the work that that particular student put into their folder. Now let's take a look at this activities tab. One of the great things about Seesaw is the fact that they have so many pre-built lessons already made for you to take and use. To access those, we're going to click on Browse Activity Library. In the Activity Library, you'll see that there's a Community tab and your own Personal Library tab. 
The community tab will be where you'll go to find all the lessons that have already been pre-built. Here you can choose to filter lessons based on grade or subject area, and you can also enter search terms for different types of activities that you're looking for. And you'll see without even searching that there are already some suggested activities that you might want to look at. The lessons at the top are all going to be activities that Seesaw has created, whereas a lot of the other lesson plans that are in Seesaw might just be lesson plans that other teachers have uploaded. You can tell that it's an official Seesaw lesson because it has this official Seesaw icon. So let's go ahead and just choose this curious moment lesson here to see what it looks like. You'll see in all the Seesaw built lessons that in addition to text, they also use icons that correspond to different actions that students could take when they are creating the assignment. So you can see here for the third step that it's asking students to either take a picture or a video. And then in the next direction, it's prompting students to add a text box or add their own audio. And in addition to these directions, students could also play the audio below in order to just listen to the instructions read out loud to them. If you decide that you want to assign it, go up to the green assign button. There, you'll be given the ability to assign the assignment to only a select group of students or to all your students. And then you can also push that assignment out into a particular folder. And then lastly, if you have skills set up, you can also associate a skill with that assignment. When we created the folder system, that was a folder system for our students, but you should also start to create your own folder system within Seesaw for the different lessons. So one way to do that is by going up here to the heart icon. If you like a lesson, that is going to prompt you to add it to a collection. So you can start to find different assignments that you like and then add them to different buckets of collections. That will also allow you to access those same lessons year after year if you decide that you want to use them again in the future. Now that we've created that assignment, you'll see that it shows up in the Activities tab under Assigned to Class. So the pre-made assignments are great, but of course you're also just going to want to create your own lessons from scratch as well. So to do that, go up to the green Add button, select Assign Activity, and this time, rather than the Community tab, go over to the My Library tab and click Create New Activity. There you can give the assignment a name as well as some instructions, and you can also record yourself reading the instructions out loud so that students can just listen to it. And then you also have access to all these different ways of uploading different types of media as a way to either provide an example or to give instruction. Some of these are pretty self-explanatory, like the ability to upload a file into Seesaw, or to take a video from your webcam, you can add a link to another website, or you can also take a photo from your webcam as well. And if you open up this drawing tool, this is actually the interface that will still be available even if you've uploaded other things like an image. This will allow you to add things like text boxes and audio and different types of pencils and pens and different colors and all sorts of things like that. I am gonna show you exactly what this looks like when we get into the student end. But what I do want to show you here is how you can set up a template that students could draw on top of. So let's say, for example, that you have a bunch of old worksheets that have been scanned and now they're static documents and don't seem all that functional in a digital environment. What you can do is upload them into Seesaw like this math worksheet here. And then when you assign it to students, they will be able to just draw directly on top of that template. All right, so now that I've uploaded this math worksheet in that my students are going to write directly on top of, I'm going to hit assign. And then when we get back into the teacher dashboard, we'll see that both of those assignments are now showing up. So now that we've learned how to create assignments and put them into folders and then assign them to our students, I'm going to show you how to create an announcement that you can send out to students or students and families. So we're going to go back to the green add button and there we're going to select send announcement. You'll see in the drop down that you can select to make this announcement to just students, to family members, or to students and family members. And you can also add attachments to this announcement as well. All right, now that we've seen the basics of the teacher end, let's jump in and take a quick look at what a student account would look like. You'll remember in the beginning that we already had our students sign into our account. So now when that student is logged into Seesaw, after we've created those assignments, they're going to see that they have some new activities to complete. When they click on an assignment, they'll see those same instructions and be able to listen to the audio version. Then when they're ready to respond, they'll click add response. And here, as I mentioned, they'll be given the same options for how they could respond to that prompt as you were given when you were creating media as well. If a student ever needs to go back and see what the instructions are, they can just click on the link on the top and that will pull up those instructions again. 
As part of those instructions, the teacher was asking students to either take a photo or a video. So to add a photo, all students will do is click on the photo icon that will pull up their webcam, and then they can take a picture of whatever they need to for this assignment. Then students will still be able to annotate on top of their images. So they can add things like text boxes that explain what it is that they're showing. They can also click on the microphone and that will allow them to record their voice and then add an audio file. And they can also click on the shapes tool to add different shapes like arrows pointing to specific places on their work, for example. And the shapes like everything else are fully customizable so students can drag them around and change the color and do things like that. At the bottom, if students click on the quotation marks, they can also add text captions or voice captions to their work as well. And then all these different drawing tools at the bottom allow students to choose a digital stylus and then write or draw directly on top of the image as well. Once students are ready to submit their work, they'll click on that green check on the top right hand side of the screen, and then it will be sent back to you for approval. So you can see here that the student is still waiting for that approval. And then the color changed to orange here to indicate that their teacher actually returned that work to them and is asking them to redo it. And then here you can see that the student has been notified that their work has now been approved. Now let's look quickly at that math worksheet assignment. So if a student clicks on it, they'll be taken to that math worksheet where they can draw directly on top of it to add their answers to the problems. Let's look quickly just at a couple of other ways that students could also add work. So here, if they clicked on video, that would allow them to take a video through their webcam and they could be explaining something or showing something about their work. And then after they've created that video, they'll still have all the annotation tools available to them as well. And they can also upload files so they could choose to bring files in from their computer or from their Google Drive folder. And if they click on note, that will just allow them to type on digital paper. And then lastly, in order to see that message that you sent out to students, they can go to their inbox and then select messages. And under messages, they'll see the announcement that you had posted. So those are the basics of how to use Seesaw for elementary school students. It's a really powerful and dynamic program. And I think both you and your students are really going to like it. Just a reminder that I do also have a link in the video description to the student tutorial, and that will take you over to another YouTube channel that's just for education technology tutorials for students. If you have any questions or comments about using Seesaw at the elementary level, please put them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. If you found the tips that I shared helpful, please share it with other teachers that you know, hit the like button, and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. You can also check out some of the other tutorials I have on my channel by clicking on one of those two videos above. And if you're interested in downloading any of the resources that I've created and show on my videos, please visit my website at www.newedtechclassroom.com. Lastly, if you want to check me out on social media, my Twitter handle, Facebook page, and Pinterest account are all in the description below. Thanks so much and have a great week.